Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck, and I'm going to do my weekly reading update for July 12th? Yeah, 12, 2020. Uh, me and weekends, I know. Um, so I did, uh, I did an okay reading. Um, I had a great reading week of what I read, just I didn't get as much done as I was hoping. I had this, I had grandiose plans of what I was going to get through, and of course it never goes through. Um, Work was uh, very busy and this was a hard week. It just, there was a lot going on at work. Um, well, I mean, again, I'm still working at home for the most part and then I just go in two mornings a week. Um, so it's, you know, so it kind of gives me that variety of, I do get to see people, but you know, now we're much more masked up and everything. So it's kind of different. And uh, as I said, I'm glad that they're still allowing me to work from home at this point. So that is cool. Um, it's just been a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Um, I just, I'm not reading a lot at night as I usually do. And I think still part of that is part of my uh, addiction to Animal Crossing. But other, other, some other, I think it's sometimes I, I just don't feel like reading right now. It's just, it's the summer, you know, you never know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not blaming the summer. I don't know. It's just, but I, I mean, I did get some things done. So I'm going to talk about the books that I finished and the ones that I started. And then what I think I'm going to read uh, later in the week. So the first book I finished was my reread of Into the Storm. Can you see that? Into the Storm by Taylor Anderson. This is the first book in the Destroyer Man series. Um, this is 15 books long. It's just completed. And so I've decided I'm going to go back and read the four books that I read. Uh, well, I read most of the three of them back in like 2011 and 12. And then I picked them up and reread them and read the fourth book in 2000. Did I say 14? I think it was 14. Anyway, so I haven't read them in quite a while. So, I mean, I've read these, so I, it's, this is like my third read of this, three to fourth on the first book. I don't know. Anyway, I really enjoyed it again. It just took me a long time. It took me like almost two weeks to read it, but it was because I wasn't reading or dedicating myself to it. Um, again, this is a, a t alternative history uh, with uh, men, or uh, well, two warships or two, um, destroyer ships from the American side that are were battling in the Java Sea in uh, 1942 and they go into a squall to uh, get away from the Japanese um, fleet and they are sucked into an alternative universe where things, it's the same landscape but different things are there like as in evolution went a different route and, and all that stuff. So. Um, so you're dealing with a lot of characters and this, this is one of the, the biggest casts because you, again, you have all these, uh, men and a few women that were on the, on the boats. Um, and then how they meet, uh, other, uh, people from the people from that time period and how different they are from them and, uh, species. And so it's really, uh, it's, as I said, I've really enjoyed this series. You just have to know it's a lot of guys and it's a lot of testosterone because it's 1942 and they're, you know, they were all in a war and then suddenly they're somewhere else. Um, really, I've liked this overall. So as I said, the series. So I really would like to continue it because again, book four ended on a cliffhanger and I'm still mad at myself that I did not continue. <laughs> Anyway, so I've got the first book done. So I will probably be picking up the next book in the next month or two. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to keep that as my, my main reread series right now. I mean, I know I have other rereads that I'm going to do in the, in the middle, but of like, that's the focus. I really would like to get that in the next couple of years is to get through that series. So I'm going to, I'm going to, and I know I, I can't read them back to back anymore. Like I think I read them in a reread that way. And I think that's why by the time I read book four, which was the new book, I was burned out. So I'm going to space them out a little bit, but not too far because I don't want to forget things because there are a lot of characters, but I really enjoyed that series and I like that book. Um, so then on Monday I was supposed to pick up a book or a audiobook that I'll show you in a minute. And I decided now I'm going to listen to Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This was narrated by Rosamund Pike and I, this is my favorite book of all time. So there's not a whole lot I can say here except it was my first time listening to an audio and it was a weird experience at first. I had to, it's really funny hearing somebody else read it. Um, 
for the first time when you've read it so many times yourself. It was a very strange experience, but by the end, I really enjoyed it. But I have to say that at first, I wasn't quite sure this was a good idea. <laughs> Because I'm like, I don't know. I like reading it better. And I think I think still overall, my reading it myself is a much better experience. And yet, it was a really good audiobook. So, I don't know. So, I have it as backup if I want to listen to it again. We'll, we'll see. I don't know if... Like, there are certain audiobooks I know I'm going to listen to again of classics. And there's ones like North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I just love that audiobook. And I'm um, sorry <laughs> thinking of reading it later this year. Anyway, point is, I don't know when the next time I'll listen to Pride and Prejudice. I'll probably pick it up as a read uh, next time. But I, again, favorite book of all time. I don't have to say a whole lot about it. But again, I'm doing this for Jane Austen July. This was my first finish of the month. Which, again, I didn't have to reread that, but I just wanted to. Anyway, so now I'm going to talk about the books that I am in the middle of. So, Last week I had started Selected Letters by Jane Austen. I just, I think I'd read the first five or so. I don't know. I, I just started, I think, on Saturday. Um, so I'm almost halfway done, um, which, again, this takes a long time to read just because they're letters. And she name drops all the time. And so I have to stop and think which Elizabeth we're talking about or which uh, Anna or, you know, like, or who's that connected to again? Again, it's just my, you know, I, I think it's, I just think you need to take them slow. You can't read them fast. Let's put it that way. So I have, um, I've told myself I have to read at least five letters a day. Um, this is very hard for me to keep to any schedule of having to read, but I have kept to it so far and I've actually gotten like ahead a couple, like five letters. So I'm technically on, I just finished uh, letter 45 last night. So I'm almost halfway today. I'll cross over to 50 and then I'll be halfway because there's 97. I think there's 97. It's it's close to 97, 96. I can't remember which for sure. And of course I can't find it because 97. So, um, so I'm hoping, as I said, I'm hoping to get this done um, around the 21st, I think is what I planned when I started it. So I'm just trying to get it done within the month and uh, read this. I still think I'm probably going to buy the the whole collection of the letters, though I might not go back and read the ones that are in the that I'm missing from this collection because this collection is 97. And I think there's a hundred and sixty something. So I'm gonna I might wait to read those another year, like maybe in two years, <laughs> go back and figure out which ones I haven't read and go through and read them. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'm I don't know if anybody has any uh tips on that, but I, I am really getting a lot out of this and I'm really enjoying it. Um even if it sometimes feels like a chore, because again I've set myself up to read five a day, but and some of the letters are like four or five pages long. <laughs> Oh, long letter writing, but I, I, I get so much out of it. So it's just, again, it's a constant. And again, it was a lot, it's really the last things of Jane Austen's that I have never, I've never read is the letters. So as I said, I'm getting the selected done and then maybe later on in another year, I can do the rest of the letters and then I'll be, I'd read everything that we have that she, that we, we have of hers. So we'll see. Um, and then the book that I'm currently reading is, um, physical, is uh, Sicilian Romance by Anne Radcliffe. This was published in 1790, and this was her first second book. And actually, I'm actually pretty impressed with this one. I read um, The Italian, was it last year or the year before? I don't remember. It must have been last year. I don't know. And I, I was okay with it. Like, it was, it was pretty dramatic and all over the place. This is also that way, but I'm much more intrigued with the mystery on this one. And I'm, I'm, it's very weird. So it's taking place, uh, uh, in Sicily and this, um, uh, Marquis is, or I don't even know how you say that. I've only ever seen it read. Or, you know, anyway, this, this guy who owns a castle, he has a couple of daughters and a son and he has kind of neglected the daughters and left them at the castle while he goes live somewhere else because there's a mystery about the castle of why he doesn't want to live there. So he comes back though when his son has reached his majority age or whatever where he's going to um, take on more responsibilities and they come back for this whole big party and of course there's all this, it's very gothic descriptions of 
the castle. There's this area, this one section of it has been closed off for decades. Nobody knows what's been on there except someone, they're starting to see lights coming from there and maybe some footsteps. And um, it just twists and turns and it actually, I'm having a lot of fun. This one I'm enjoying a lot more than I did The Castle of El Trato by um, Horace Wadlow, Wadpole. Um, this was a little, this is again about 25 years later. But I'm, I'm enjoying her writing this in this book a lot better than I did in The Italian, which was the, her last book that she published. So I'm, I'm kind of confused about that. But um, anyway, but it's like a 200 uh, page novel. I'm... I'm only at 90 pages, so I was hoping to finish this yesterday, but I just got distracted by TV. So, um, anyway, this is Twist and Turns. And again, the only other thing I would say that you can tell this is 18th century literature, I mean, other than some of the way that they describe things, is how they rush to each cliff, like, to each, um, plot point. Like, it's a rush. Like, all you're going along and it seems like that you think you know where it's going then suddenly it'll twist and it'll be like dramatic and huge and um not what I expected which is great I mean I like that part of it it's just but it's so fast like it's it's like so much happens if you have a long paragraph sometimes if you don't pay attention and you're like wait wait wait, wait. you have to go back and read it because you're like wait something like dramatic happened on this one sentence so <laughs> anyway it's so fun and I um, it's weird how it is, it is changing perspective at certain times. A character that was not even talked about until like page 60 and now in the 70s and 80s he's like the main character or the one we're following and I'm like what the hell is going on? <laughs> but overall I really like this and I the reason I just I mean I hope to finish it today because I want to know what happens but it's just a weird book and again 1790 and it's the it's gothic and you know again this is again for Jane Austen July to read um even though it was technically um you know published before she was writing she definitely read Anne Radcliffe because of you know thing her and all that stuff so I know she read it <laughs> so that's why I read it anyway and then the last Jane Austen July pick that I'm currently in the middle of it or in is the Jane Austen Society by Natalie Jenner. So I am listening to this in audio from my library. Um, it is narrated by Richard Armitage, which is the only reason probably why I started it. I, I'm not sure about this one. So I'm only about 15% of the way through. And my cats are destroying something up front. Sorry. Um, I'm not sure about this one. So, um, I started it and it, it did like three chapters that were very far, like ch changing times. Like the first chapter was from the 1930s and then we're somewhere in the early 40s and then again in the, then another chapter in the early 40s while the war was going on. And then we have chapters that start that are afterwards. And again, this takes place after World War II and this is about saving, um, I believe the um, house where Jane Austen lived, the Croton. So, um, which was near her, um, brother's estate of, oh, I don't even know how you say that. God, just hire, I don't, I am something. I don't remember what the name is. Sorry. I'm not doing good. I see it written in the letters like all the time, but my brain can't put the letters together. Sorry. Um, so I don't know about this cause it's about the small town that's, that's there, that Croton, that people live there. And then I think people come in to do this. So I'm not sure about this one. Not sure this is going to click with me, but I told myself I had to get at least 25% of the way through before I DNF. So I will probably try to listen to that tomorrow to see if I'm into it or not. I just, I'm not clicking with it. I'm, I don't hate it, but I don't love it either, if that makes any sense. Like, I'm just not, it doesn't draw me, like, I started the audiobook on Thursday and I have not wanted to pick it up since. And I've been in my car twice yesterday and today and I did not want to listen to it. So, I don't know. Anyway, so when I finish A Sicilian Romance, my goal is to pick up a library book. Okay, I was so excited because I wasn't going to get this book. Um, I, well, I put it as an audio pick um, from my library and I thought, oh, it's like it's like 18 weeks out. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to get that. And then I looked at online on the library and it was like, you know, I was cop number eight in the list. And again, right now we're in COVID, so um, books take longer to process and... Um, so I wasn't expecting to get a physical book for at least a month. 
And I didn't, and again, I don't think they had that many. They might have gotten more copies or something. But anyway, I saw Katie at Books and Things again. You should be watching her if you're doing Jane Austen in July or anything classics. And she had gone through her favorite retellings. And of course, some of those I, I, I have on my list that I would I have read and then some I want to read. And this is the one this year I've been wanting to read. And I just finally just, okay, I'll just put on my library. I'll just get the, I'll, I did the audio and the, and the physical. Well, the physical came in the next day and I couldn't believe it. So I got an appointment and got to go to my library and pick it up because that's what we're doing, uh, pickups. Um, by appointment at this point. And um, I got The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. And I'm like, I was so excited because I was like, wow, that came in. <laughs> I was number eight and I got it right away. So I don't know if it was because it was returned to my library branch and then that's why I got it. I'm not sure, but I was stunned that I got it the next day. Anyway, long story short, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, so this is the story of Mary Bennett, the, the middle sister of the Bennett sisters from Pride and Prejudice. And so this is the retelling of Pride and Prejudice from her point of view. And I guess so, I guess at least the third of the beginning or to half is like a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from her perspective or with her focus. And then later is what happens to her afterwards. So again, I've heard great things about this, Katie at Books and Things, and quite a few other uh, booktubers that I've watched. So again, it was on my list. I just hadn't, wasn't going to buy a hardback. So I was going to get it from my library or wait. And it just popped up. So I read the first chapter in line at Taco Bell. I know that sounds bad. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, <laughs> and that was a long line. And so um, I really enjoyed the writing right away. So I read the first six pages um, on Friday when I got this and then I put it down because I go I have to finish the other books first I can't keep starting books so I am going to pick this up after um a Sicilian romance so I'm hoping to get a Sicilian romance done today so I can I can get to that we shall see and then the only other um thing I want to put out the next audiobook I will probably listen to Persuasion by Jane Austen so this is my second favorite Austen novel and probably if I think about it, probably in the top 10 of my favorite books of all time. <laughs> I know Jane Austen has two spots, but whatever. Um, I, I reread this last year as well as Pride and Prejudice, and I really enjoyed the reread, but I thought I would get the audiobook of this as well and try that and see if I like it that way. Because I did like Sense and Sensibility so much better <laughs> in audio than physical. Um, and again, Pride and Prejudice, I like to, I think read will be better, but I have an option to re to listen to it. And I want to do with the same with the Persuasion. So I used one of my credits to get it. This one I didn't get on sale like I did the others, but, um, but it is one of my favorite novels and it's probably my own, the only second chance romance that I really, really enjoy. <laughs> I really don't like them, especially in contemporary books. And, um, I think it's mostly because of just... To me, second, no, no second chance. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds stupid, but this is, again, one of my favorite books of all time, though, but it's done really, really well. So, um, and again, if you don't know. <laughs> anyway, so that, again, is for another Jane Austen uh, July pick. And then I still have three other books that I would like to get to after these. So we'll see. I'm, you know, I I'm always want to read more than I probably will get to. So we shall see. So... Um, so those are the books that I have finished or I'm in the middle of or I'm going to read next. So anyway, um, what are you guys reading? Are you guys reading anything good? Uh, let me know. Um, are you taking part in Jane Austen July? Um, again, um, it has been fantastic uh, reading. Every July has been. This is the third year and I've enjoyed it uh, immensely just finding uh, retellings and then reading and then actually making myself read some of the older uh, novels um, that um, were published around her time or that she would have read. And I think that, that's been really fascinating. There's so many I have more I have on my shelf that I would like to get to, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so that's it. Okay, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.